Permission from our chairperson, Professor Dr. Mohammad Jalibur Rahman sir, I will start our first topic presentation, that is risk stratification and measurable residual disease of acute lymphoblastic leukemia patient. The speaker is a graduate from Sherry Bangla Medical College Hospital and completed her MD hematology under Bangalore to Sheikh Mujib Medical University. Today, she is also going to share her practical findings on cytogenetics in ALA patients of VSMA. With that, I humbly ask you to give your full attention to Dr. Minati Bhavi Mukti and help me to welcome her in the stage. Please, Dr. Minati. A very good morning to all. This is Dr. Minuti Pan Mukti. I just completed my post graduation on MD hematology, and it is a great honor to be here to present my topic. This is the risk stratification and MRD of acute lymphoblastic leukemia. Here is some basic information that is, it has bimodal distribution, 
It comprises about 30% of all childhood malignancy. It is five times more common than AML. And regarding incidence in adult, it is about 1.34, whereas in children, it is around 32 per 100,000 in kids. And there is huge difference in the survival rate between these two group of population. In children, the five-year survival rate about 85 to 90 percent, but in case of adult, it is only 30 to 40 percent. Why risk stratification should be done? It should be done as a part of complete evaluation of ALN and before initiation of management, as well as for targeted therapy. And the importance can be explained in two ways. The first, risk adapted therapy. What is this? In case of low risk group, we should imply low intensity therapy to reduce the chance of toxicity. But in case of high risk group, aggressive therapy should be considered to reduce the chance of relapse. And by this risk based therapy and some preventive measure in high risk population, survival rate can be improved. Here are some risk factors or prognostic factor that is used in risk stratification that are is initial WBC count, cytogenetics, immunologic subtypes, rapidity and degree of cytoreduction that is the response of treatment. There are some other less important factors as the modern treatment is so strong and the outcome is more powerful before that. So these factors become based on no longer significant at all. That includes six, FAB subtypes, presence of mediastinal mass, organomegaly, lymphadenopathy, hemoglobin level, race, platelet count, and serum immunoglobulin. There are four risk categories based on these factors. The favorable is that is less than 10 years, low WBC count, less than 50,000, presence of favorable cytogenetics, and rapid response to treatment are in low risk group. Favorable is low WBC count, favorable response to treatment, but without favorable cytogenetics are considered to have gender risk. And in high risk group, is more than 10 years, WBC count more than 50,000, unfavorable cytogenetics, and emerging more than 0.01% at day 28 to 36 of induction therapy. And in very high risk group, is more than 13 and less than 1, presence of some unfavorable cytogenetics and failure to achieve CR at the end of induction. This figure showing the age distribution in childhood and adult ALN. As I previously mentioned, it is a disease of the children. So about 60% cases contributes to less than 20 years of age group. This figure showing the age-based risk distribution in childhood and adult ALN, and it explained why the survival rate is better in children and poor in adult. In children, the maximum portion have good risk cytogenetics, so they fall in low risk category. In contrast, in adults, they have the bad risk cytogenetics prominent, so the survival rate is lower than children. What is the importance of cytogenetics? It plays an important role in risk stratification and it has a great impact on prognosis. And presence of different cytogenetics abnormalities, we can divide in three groups. EGP6 run X1 and presence of high hypertrophy that is chromosome number more than 50 includes in favorable group, normal karyotype and hyperdiploidy in intermediate group and unfavorable risk presence of translocation 952, BCR-ABL online signature, KMT-12 arrangement, intrachromosomal amplification of 21, abnormal 17P and loss of 30Q, and hypodiploidy. And usually this cytogenetic abnormality is associated with increased risk of relapse. Immunophenotype, the another prognostic factor, uh, it is not clear whether the outcome of T-cell ALN is directly related to its phenotype itself or the presence of initial WBC count, presence of mediastinal mass, and CNS involvement. 
but it is generally accepted that the T cell ALL should be regarded as a high risk ALL and treated accordingly. And among the subtype, the early thymocyte precursor has poorer outcome. It is associated with increased expression of myeloid marker and increased risk of relapse. And in B cell ALL, the mature subtype, which corresponds to the fat classification F3, it is a disseminated form of Barkitt's lymphoma and it has poorer outcome. The measurable residual disease. It is the most powerful and strongest factor in predicting prognosis. The five year overall survival rate and the risk of relapse is directly related with the residual disease. So, the assessment of disease response by MRT stratification is desirable. And we can measure MRT by the following techniques. This improves the polymer strain reaction, multicolor flow cytometry, deep sequencing. As the deep sequencing is not yet available, so the suitable or sensitive method is polymer strain reaction. The bone marrow splits of peripheral blood both can be used as a source, but the peripheral blood is on to three lot lower than the bone marrow split. So the, so the ideal source is bone marrow split. And regarding timing, it usually varies according to different various treatment regimen, but should generally accept that at the end of induction and or during oxidation therapy, it should be regarded. And the decision regarding the intensification or de intensification of the treatment can be made based on MRT stratification. And it consists of three risk groups. In MRT low risk group, when the day 29 MRT less than 0.005%, and intermediate risk when the day 29 MRT more than 0.005%, but 14 week MRT less than 0.5%, and high risk when the 14 week MRD more than 0.5%. In case of low and intermediate risk, patients should be treated according to chemotherapy regimen, but when they fall in high risk group, they should be treated with hemopathic stress cell transplantation. In BSMU, we have conducted two different studies regarding the cytogenetic abnormalities of ALL. In first study, which is done in 2019 to 2020, it was studied the cytogenetic abnormalities of in genome of ALL, and my study population was 36. And based on different cytogenetic abnormalities, the three risk group we received. The uh, favorable risk group was 14%, unfavorable risk group was 25%, and intermediate were 6 to 1%. The another study, which was done in 2018 to 2019, the title was The Frequency of Bicerebia Positive in a Patient in Basic Review, and the study population was 38. And based on presence of Bicerebia 1, the unfavorable risk group was 37%. So, uh, this is the figure where the cytogenetic pattern of the study population where gain is equal to 36 is shown here, where the most common cytogenetic abnormality that we have found, translocation 922 in 17% case, and the second most abnormalities was translocation 1221 in 11% cases. And based on all these cytogenetic abnormalities, the risk group we have found that favorable risk group were about 14%, unfavorable group was 25% case, and intermediate was 61. This is the figure of the second study where the bicerebral positivity of the study population is shown here. The bicerebral positive case was about 37%. Similar type of study has been conducted in India in 2018, where they found unfavorable risk group in 33% cases and favorable risk group in 23%. In another study, in West India in 2012, they found favorable risk group in 16% cases. In maximum time, we cannot perform the full risk stratification of our patient because we have some limitation. What are those? The first one is limited resource. That is, 
the financial capability of or most of the patient is on the lower hand. So the treatment cost is become a burden. So they cannot perform the uh, stratification with cytogenetic or MRT. It will and another burden for them. The second one is inadequate facilities. That is the cytogenetic and molecular lab is not yet established in our country. So we have to rely on effort for these facilities. So the control of the sample cannot be maintained properly. And the last of all, the poor patient complaints. Sometimes we fail to able to realize our patient or to motivate our patient to do this costly investigation for full evaluation of the patient. So this is all about my presentation. Thank you to all. And Thank you, Dr. Minati Parmukti. It was an excellent presentation, elaborated but presented within time. Now, our next topic will be on management of acute lymphoblastic leukemia in adolescent and young adult patients. Our next speaker is a graduate from Solimola Medical College Hospital and completed her MD hematology under Bangabandhu Sheikh Mujib Medical University. He, she is a very known face and her mission is to be a distinguished voice within the country. And she is Dr. Nisha Faisabi. Let's share her presentation. My respected teachers, my colleagues and our residents, Assalamu alaikum. I'm Dr. Nisha Mizabin, just completed my MD residency in hematology. I am really honored to be here today for this presentation. My topic is management of ALL in adolescent and young adult patients. First of all, we have to uh, know the defining age group for adolescent and young adult people. This is 15 to 39 years and we all know that the older adults are more than 40 years and we consider the elderly patient uh, on, on more than 65 years. Uh, this is just a recapitulate uh, slide because we all know the general treatment principle that is induction and the backbone is elasparaginous, vein twisting. We also use prednisolone, cyclophosphamide and anthracyclines. And then consolidation that is hydrocytorabine and methotrexate. And maintenance we use orally 6 mark aptopurine, uh, orally MTX steroid and IV vein twisting and also IT methotrexate. But what is the treatment protocols? Uh, we can uh, subdivide the patients in some group like Philadelphia chromosome negative ALL. In case of adolescent and young adult group, uh, we use in case of Philadelphia chromosome negative ALL, pediatric style intensive multi agent chemotherapy regimen. The commonly used multi agent chemotherapy regimens are BFM, UKLL, KGB, Petema, etc. Why we use in Philadelphia chromosome positive ALL? Obviously, we use the targeted therapy that is thyrosine kinase inhibitor and multi agent chemotherapy, mostly hypersivate, followed by allogenic stem cell transplantation. In case of TLL, the treatment of choice is more, mostly hypersivate, followed by allogenic stem cell transplantation. But in case of TTP negative TLL, we can use melanopin instead of allogenic stem cell transplantation. Uh, sometimes uh, we know that we choose the treatment as the risk stratification, but 
when there is question of use of multi agent chemotherapy sometimes we feel confused what to choose for an individual patient and international studies say what about this option treatment protocols we have already mentioned that selected mainly according to the risk stratification but induction is almost similar for for all risk groups and in every multi agent chemotherapy but there is differences in the consolidation regimen and the doses depend on mrd status if after induction the mrd is less than 0.005% then we can continue as per regimen but if the mrd is more than 0.005% after induction we should provide augmented therapy or b induction the backbone of every protocol are more or less similar to each other except the dose drug schedule timing of mrd testing such as sometimes we use calgp which contains pezylated l aspergillase this is the difference from the other multi agent chemotherapy why we use pezylated l aspergillase because it's an arvirinia derivatives hence the chance of hypersensitivity is low but as this is pezylated we have some da toxicity in this regimen on the other hand in uk ll mrd done on day 29 while in bfm mrd done on day 15 and day 33 there is two time point of mrd testing there is also changes in schedule but the newer concept is of more condensed drug dose what is the basic difference between pediatric and adult protocols children have more critical trials disease biology or drug resistance mechanism in adult cannot be ruled out treatment related toxicity and mortality is less in children then why we use the pediatric based treatment in adolescent and young adult various studies suggest that adolescent and young adult age group can tolerate the pediatric regimen also we know that the uh, cr rate in pediatric age group is uh, more or less 80% but in case of adolescent and young adult the cr rate is 30 to 40% only but after using the pediatric based regimen in the ia group there is an increase in the rate of complication regimen in this age group also now the new treatment and the targeted therapy we all know that philadelphia chromosome positive all we use tyrosine kinase inhibitor in case of t315i mutation we can use pomatinib in case of cd20 positive all we use rituximab and bcr abl1 like gene positive we can use tki and rosolitinib can be used also sometimes <laughs> Well, I want to say some uh, points about BCR ABL1 like acute lymphoblastic leukemia in this uh, slide because nowadays it's a great challenge because uh, BCR ABL1 like gene positive ALL uh, in high risk group and it's very much difficult to treat and remain a patient in complete CR. Uh, the uh, BCR ABL1 like gene can al uh, alter two pathway that is. Uh, tyrosine kinase pathway and also jagster pathway in abl class lesion the genes are abl1 abl2 ptgfr b ptgfr a and csf1r while in the jagster family we have crlf2 cr uh, and il7r in case of jagster uh, pathway dysregulation we can use ruxolitinib and in case of abl class lesion we use the tki the other uh, targeted therapy or the newer agents are clofarabine melarabine vincristin liposomal linotumumab inotuzumab and tisagenyl leucel which is a cardiac therapy uh, what is the indication for allogeneic stem cell transplantation the high risk patient and relapse and refractory cases 
My second presenter will uh, discuss and elaborately on this topic. Now, some international data about the effectiveness of various kinds of treatment protocols, that is the different use of multi-agent chemotherapy. A single central study in Saudi Arabia on BFM protocol shows that was published in Blood Journal in 2012, 87% patient achieved complete remission, five-year DFA disease-free survival rate was 37%, and five-year overall survival was 95%. Treatment-related mortality was 8%. A single center study in Portugal on hypersever protocol shows, which was published in PubMed in 2015, 91% patient achieved complete CR, complete remission. Five-year disease-free survival was 39%, and overall survival was 38%. Treatment-related mortality was 6%. And a single center study uh, in Saudi Arabia on CalGP and UKLL protocol shows by University of Health Science Jeddah. CalGP uh, protocol, in case of CalGP protocol, seven years overall survival was 46%, and in UKLL, five year overall survival was 45%. And what is the problem in uh, face in our country? as we have no data regarding our treatment outcome. Uh, I, may, I will mention few cases. Uh, practically, we feel the complication during our uh, normal treatment protocol in our center. Uh, I have uh, you know, four cases here, and uh, these are from PSMMO, Hematology Department. Case one, a 19 years old male. He was came into our hospital with fever and left knee joint pain. On examination, we found anemia, parvary spot, and hepatomegaly. And diagnosis was made by uh, on the basis of PDF, immunophenotyping, and cytogenetics. That was Philadelphia chromosome negative ALM. And treatment was decided to give BFM protocol. We have completed the protocol, and also maintenance is completed. The outcome. He is in complete revision now. My second case, a 23 years old male. He was admitted in BSMMU with fever and neck swelling. On examination, we found anemia, lymphadenopathy, and diagnosis was made as TALN. And treatment was decided to give hypersifat. But the outcome, uh, death due to profound cytopenia and neutropenic fever after completion of six cycles of chemotherapy. My third case, a 35 years old female. She came with fever and history of two unit blood transfusion. On examination, we found anemia and lymphadenopathy. Diagnosis was Philadelphia chromosome negative ALL, and we started BFM protocol but we were compelled to discontinue the chemo protocol during consultation because she developed pancreatitis and proximal myopathy. And palliative treatment was decided to give, but the outcome was death after two years of diagnosis. And for today, my last case, a 30 years old man. He was came with fever and neck swelling. On examination, we found anemia, lymphadenopathy, echinosis. Diagnosis was Philadelphia chromosome positive ALL. So we started TKI with hypersivet. And the outcome was death just after first cycle due to neutropenic sepsis and sudden profound hematemesis. So considering these complications, we have the new hematologist or the young hematologist has the queries that what to do when we can't continue the protocol perfectly due to complications? And what would be the outcome when we need to modify the doses and maintain an individualized schedule due to the complications? Why hypersivert regimen cannot be completed successfully in most of the institute in Bangladesh? And lastly, can we follow a same protocol in every center for a particular disease? Thank you everyone for the patient sharing. Thank you, Dr. Nisha.
was a very informative presentation and sharing your journey so we can avert our pitfalls that lie ahead. Now, I will invite my third present, uh, presenter. He is Dr. Kaji Mohammad Khanu Islam, a recent fellow of PCPS in hematology and energetic young hematologist who graduated from Sir Solibullah Medical College Hospital and currently working in the Department of Hematology, Mamadou Sheikh Modi Medical University. Assalamu alaikum, honorable chairperson of this session, respective teachers, learning audience, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome you all of this today's scientific session. I am very much grateful to Honor Hematu Society of Bangladesh to give me the opportunity to present here. I must congratulate all the newly elected members of the Hematology Society of Bangladesh. Today, my topic is Advanced Treatment Options of Relapsed ALM in Adults. Which one is Relapsed ALM? Is it refractory? According to the NCCI 2020, Relapsed disease means reappearance of blast in peripheral blood or bone marrow more than 5% or in any extramural site after a complete remission. Refractory disease means failing to achieve complete remission at the end of induction therapy. We all know that there is poor outcomes in patients with relapsed and refractory ALR. The MRC UKLL2 study outcome of patients after fast relapse Five years overall survivability is 7%, and LALA 94 study outcome of patients after past relapse, second year, uh, two year overall survivability is 11%, and five year overall survivability is 8%. Now I'm, uh, I'm now presenting some cases. Case one a 65 year old patient with Philadelphia negative. MRD positive ALL at the end of hyper CVAC one week induction cycle. What would be the further treatment options? It could be Renatumumab. It is a bi specific T cell engager. In the last study, that's a phase two trial, which is approved by FDA on March, March 2018, includes. Philadelphia negative BLM, adult patients received three or more chemotherapy blocks of standard ALL protocol and in complete remission. MRD positivity is more than 1% using an assay with a minimum sensitivity of 0.01%. Here, the end to is used 28 microgram per day, day 1 to day 28, up to 4 cycles. There is the MRD negativity is about about eighty about eighty two percent, and median relapse free survivability of bilateral in this study is fifty four percent at eighteen months. We all know that bilateral is a bi specific T cell engager which acts against CD3 and CD19 expressed by LL blast cell that activate the T cell, redirect it to cytotoxicity of tumor cell and subsequently causes tumor cell death. It also proliferates the T cell to improve the effector target. During the course of renal tumor, we must closely monitor the patient as it causes the grade 3 and 4 toxicity, including pyrexia, neurotoxicity, and cytoplasmic disease. 
it causes about 53% of the patients with neurotoxicity among those 13 patients, uh, patients have grade 3 and 4 neurotoxicity. In case 2, a 55-year-old patient with primary refractory Philadelphia negative BLL and a 25-year-old patient with relapsed BLL during maintenance treatment work with the further treatment options. That could be uh, that could be used bilateral or standard chemotherapy. In our study, which is a phase three trial, which is approved by FDA on on July 2016, includes Philadelphia negative BLL. There is a randomized trial includes the adult patients, primary refractory disease, untreated first relapse with first remission less than 12 months until second or lateral relapse and post BMT relapse. With the with the Brinatumab, the Brinatumab, the median overall survivability is 7.7 7 months and the, and the, with the standard chemotherapy it is 4 months. And overall uh, survival at the time of stem cell transposition with the median overall survivability is 6.9 months and uh, with standard chemotherapy it is 3.9 months. With the Vinatumab MRD negative PD, with the Vinatumab is 76% and the standard chemotherapy that is 48%. That is statistically significant. They are not effective in most of the subgroups here, but when the tumor burden is increased, that is the blood cell percentage is more than 50%, then the response rate between the Vinatumab and the standard chemotherapy, it, it, was, it was very close. On the tower study, it showed Vinatumab have lesser adverse effect with the comparison to standard chemotherapy, including infections, cytopenia, and other side effects. But with the brain tumor, it causes the cytokine release syndrome, which is not seen in the standard chemotherapy. The, the second option of these cases, that is ironosumab, ozogamycin, which acts against CD22, and standard chemotherapy. In innovative study includes the Willard PLM of adult patients, uh, adult patients aged over 18 years of age with relapse of refractory BLM, relapse after one to, to induction chemotherapy for ALL, Philadelphia positive BLM, precursor ALM, relapse after at least TKI and standard chemotherapy. Here the Ironosumab group, the complete remission rate is 80.7%, but the standard chemotherapy group, the response rate is 29.4%. The MRD negativity with Ironosumab, that is 78.4%, and with the standard chemotherapy, then that was 28.1%, that is statistically significant. Ironosumab is also effective in most of the subgroups. In comparison with the Brinatumab and the Ironosumab, here we showed that the Brinatumab, where the uh, tumor burden is uh, increased, it, it is closer to the response rate to the chemotherapy, uh, standard chemotherapy group, but the Ironosumab is effective when also when the tumor burden is also increased. The third option is that is cellular therapy, CAR T cell therapy. The FDA approved drug is Pisagen Lecusil. The survival rate at six months is 67%, and the, the probable essential uh, inventory survival rate is uh, at six months is 67%, and overall, overall survivability is. Overall survivability is at 
six months at 78%. In case of cellular therapy, it causes the long-term survivability. My third case, a 65-year-old patient with Philadelphia positive ALL with relapse. We all know that in case of Philadelphia positive ALL, we usually use imaginative or designative along with the standard chemotherapy. But when in, in course of time of uh, uh, relapse of uh, Philadelphia positive ALL, uh, there, there may be, a, uh, there, we must do the ABL guided mutation uh, to diagnose the next mutation like TG15Y. Yeah, that is the emergence of this resistant mutation, we should use ponatinib. Now, what are the other options other than the standard chemotherapy? It may be the brinatumab, aritizumab, or other combinations of immunotherapy and TKI. In Alcantara study for Philadelphia positive ALL, it includes the adult patient, relapse and refractory to at least one second generation or later generation, uh, generation TKIs, intolerant to second generation TKIs, and, into, and intolerant and refractory to imaginary precise. In, in, we can use Iruzumab in case of Philadelphia positive relapsed ALN and it is uh, it is same response as Philadelphia negative that I have shown earlier in this presentation. In case for a 50 year old patient with relapsed TAL during the first year of maintenance therapy. What are the currently available strategies of to treat ATLL and relapse? What are the well-known clinical trials? This is the most frustrating part of the treating to relapse TLL. That is, we really are lost in good options. There are only two FDA approved drugs, that is nelorabine and liposomal vincristine. With nelorabine, with the use of nelorabine, the relapsing survivability and overall survivability is increased. That is, the over, with nelorabine, overall, uh, overall complete remission at 26 percent, partial res response at 23 percent, median duration of complete remission is 4.1 to 273 weeks, median duration of disease free survivability is 11 to 56 weeks, and uh, Median duration or overall survivability that is 32 to 36 weeks and survival at one year that is 15 percent. But we should closely monitor the patient during the treatment of nelorabin as about 70 percent of the patient with nelorabin it causes severe neurotoxicity. It causes the sensory neuropathy along with tingling numbness and also severe motor neuropathy. Sometimes patient experience unable to work, so we should closely monitor the patient during the treatment of neurology. We can also use the liposomal ring testing in case of relapsed GLL. The overall complete remission is 20%, median overall survivability is 4.6 months, and median overall survival patients who are transplanted in complete remission is 8.9 months. The mainly three new agents for relapse and refractory ALL, the journey started to clear to man that is on 2014 with adults, adult patients with relapse and refractory being the other. Then it, it imposed in children with relapse and refractory PBL and finally approved the FDA by March 2018. And Anuzuman, which is approved on 2017. And the cellular therapy decision led to seal that is approved on 2017. What is the choice of therapy for relapse BALR? Bilirantumab is used in any ages. Ironizumab usually is used in adult patients. And cardiac cell therapy used in pediatric and young adults, usually less than 25 years of age. Efficacy with bilirantumab, that is, complete remission is 36.44%, to 
with aromatherapy that is 58 to 80 percent and traditional therapy that is 81 to 93 percent. Brinatinibab is used when the disease burden is low. Aromatherapy is used either disease burden is low or high and traditional therapy is usually used when the disease burden is low. The toxicity with is the brinatinibab and the both cellular therapy is the neurotoxicity, main toxicity, neurotoxicity and cytokine release syndrome. Uh, but, but with aromatherapy, the main toxicity is liver toxicity that the venoclosal disease. That is the options of adults with relapsed refractory BALL. This tower study, we compared the tower study, event study, and LIR study. The tower study, we use bilantuman with the overall response with 44%. And innovative study, we use anatomizumab, that overall response is 81%. And LIR study, that is phase two trial, it is used at decidental equipment, is 81%. MRD negativity with bilantuman, that is 76%. Iron is about 78% and Tizanel Lecusin with 100%. Median overall survey with Iron is 7.7 months. Iron is about 7.7 months also. And, and the safety measure, safe and toxicity that is I mentioned earlier. This is all about my presentation. Thanks for your patience here. Oh, that was such a mature and wonderful presentation. Thank you, Dr. Kazimono Kamuslam, with best wishes. Now, let's move to our last topic, that is bone marrow transplantation in acute lymphoblastic leukemia patient. And a uh, little introduction for our last speaker. He is a medicine specialist, a graduate of Anshin Medical College Hospital, Hospital Medical College, and done his MCPS in 2015, became fellow of MCPS in internal medicine since 2016. And we are very lucky that he has shown interest and completed her in his MD hematology in this year from Dhaka Medical College. Please welcome Dr. Mohammad Mangubul Alam. Evolving 
Allogenic stem cell therapy is potential inhibitive option and we block thyroid growth in all patients except the adolescent and young adult. There is no consensus on early transplant for standard risk patient. The patient age, cytogenetic, and MRD status determine the transplant, especially in the standard risk. Which patient should be transplanted? The high risk patient in complete division 1, relapse and refractory LL cases, poor prognostic subtype, such as early fibric precursors, high risk cytogenetics, such as Philadelphia life signatures. MRD positive after two subsequent courses of treatment, but the dilemma is on the standard risk. Should, be, should patient be transported at CR1 or wait for relapse? The donor for the transplant depends upon the availability. Mass CP donor is the ideal one, but the alternate source are mass unsimply, mass unsimply donor heparinical donor and umbilical cord blood banking. The patient diagnosis, subtype, treatment response, patient factors, and stem cell availability, and patient which is guide to treatment strategy. Now the selection of the patient and donor. The biological age, not the chronological one, of the recipient is very important. The donor and Recipient should be closely matched. The ideal one is matched with the donor. Matched unrelated donor may be sought from the donor registry. That may be national or international one. Heptoidentical or matched unrelated donor may be considered if the increased risk of procedure are accepted. The cytomegalovirus status is very much important and it should be positive for the uh, positive recipient and donor should be negative for negative recipient. Having B transfused patient should be ADO blood group matched. Uh, now the donor cell source, unrelated or related. Previously, outcome of mass unrelated were inferior to mass sibling donor, but nowadays improvements in the donor recipient eligibility matching in distance of the liberty. And the CPSD prophylaxis and the very much effective supporting care solves this issue. Uh, it, there is two study. One revealed a retrospective uh, analysis of higher DSP survival from best sibling donor, best unrelated donor, and revealed 45% higher survival in contrast to 42% in mass related donor. Another study revealed that four year amount of survival was not different between the related versus unrelated donor. Thus, the unrelated donors are a reasonable option in whom related donors are not available. What are the alternative to erogenic stem cells as well? The alternative are haplo or umbilical cord blood, and another is cotolugas. In case of pediatric L2, haplo or, haplo or umbilical cord blood is established, but the data is evolving in case of adult stage 2. Cotolugas transplantation is not standard in the island, but may be a good option in MRD negative. High risk patients, those are not eligible for allogenic acid. It also safe and effective in Philadelphia positive level without mass-sibling donor. The key transplant investigations included the hematological, biochemical, virological, immunological, microcardiac, function test, and molecular testing. In addition to donors, recipients are studied lung function tests. Cytogenic abnormalities in large panel, dental review, and cyclic evaluation. The conditioning agent used in allogenic transplant are bioavailability or reduced intensity conditioning. The bioavailability conditioning regimen uh, is by the, either on total body irradiation based or chemotherapy based. In the East Asian patient, 
the uh, appropriate conditioning element it is still to be established. But the Korean study demonstrated EBI therapy may be appropriate or best for the younger generation. But the another study it is higher to publish chemotherapy regimen for adult age group. But the main outcome was comparable to other regimens. The available myelinated regimens are total body irradiation and combination of cyclostomite. It is the standard one. But the boost alpha and cyclostomite is well comparable to the default regimen by overall survival, response rate, and disease survival. So, advantage in the substituting of etoposide for cyclostomite or cyclostomite with increased dose of total body radiation has the same type of response. Now, the reduced intensity conditioning. It is yet to be defined in younger generation. Beta comes with RIC, that is down versus leukemia effect. It, it helps to eradicate the leukemia and lower the relapse rate of GPSD. EBMT study found increased relapse rate, but non relapse mortality is reduced. So, reduced intensity conditioning is inadequate for two, but a reasonable option in advanced stage and in comorbid conditions. The complications of MACT are established transfer related mortality. Neutropenic sepsis is a dangerous one. Blood pulses host disease may be in acute form or chronic form. Seizure may occur from the conditioning agent such as busulfur. The catering may be due to chemotherapy agent or steroid or radiation. There may be endocrinopathy. And there is a chance of fecal malignancy such as skin malignancy. And the dangerous one is post transplant lymphatic disorder such as PTLD. It is caused by Epstein by virus. And the last one is psychological disturbance. Follow up and post transplant surveillance. Is immunosuppressive therapy is life long needed? Answer is no. Immunosuppressive therapy is withdrawn at the third month and ultimately it should be discontinued at the sixth month. The patient should be prophylaxis for viral therapy by acyclamine and bacterial therapy for antibacterial therapy by penicillin or cold type of surgeon. If there is penicillin allergy, the patient should be treated with rifamycin. And the patient physical condition should be monitored by practicing good oral hygiene. The patient should take medical medicine medication for anti and notice pyrexia and treated. The patient is closely monitored up to 100 days for the adjustment, transfusion requirements, drug versus host disease, cytomegalovirus status, treatment related side effects, chimerism, psychosocial and relapse. After 100 days, the patient should be follow up in, in little bit wider like range, that is 4 to 8 weekly for first year, and then extended interval if there is no subsequent complications. Routinely, twice weekly, some blood infusion are done, and weekly perform some other tests. When the patient should be discharged? When the patient can intake fluid about 2 to 3 liters per day and tolerate diet, medication, especially oral cyclosporin or tectonimus, and the hematological parameters such as hemoglobin more than 10 gram per deciliter, absolute neutrophil count more than 1,000, and epilate more than 25,000. Prevention of clubs after aerogenic SCT, it is about to establish. In case of philadelphia positive patient, post-transplant DKI should be therapy in 90 days. Optimal duration not yet been determined. Some can look at as long as the patient can tolerate it, but some other some other advocate duration of one year. And, but the PCR again positive status increase the relapse rate. Now the treatment of relapse. The available options for post erogenic transplant relapse are donor infusion, infusion, second transplant if the patient is capable or, or tolerate, and the last one is palliative treatment.
study limited chemotherapy followed by second transplant and non transplant had the uh, had low statistically significant difference now the alternative to the transplant the immunotherapy based on mt cd 52 that is lm to jumet and the mt cd 22 that is animal to jumet or by specific t cell engagers that is dinatumumab or the immunotherapy alternatives Cardi cell therapy is under development after success in use of CLN, and the novel answer such as Nelanamine is a good option. I took help from this in the references and they took messages that only high risk T cell or B cell ALL are provided indication for allergenic transplant, positive MRD even after transplant or chemotherapy has post outcome even after allergenic transplant. And in future, novel targeted agents such as Binatumumab, Cardiacal therapy, or Nelanobi may replace allergenic stem cell transplant. Thank you for patient hearing and thanks to Society, Hematology Society of Bangladesh. Thank you again. Thank you, Dr. Mohammad Mahmoud for your practical experiences. And with it, we have completed our speaker's speech. I'd like to come to request our chairperson and other panelists to take the time. এই মুহূর্তে আমি শ্রদ্ধা করে স্মরণ করছি বিগত বছরে আমরা যাতে হারিয়েছি ব্রিগেডিয়ার জেনারেল এ কে আবু ইউসুফ খান স্যার কর্নেল প্রফেসর মনোবর মনিরুজ্জামান স্যার ফেস বি রেসিডেন্ট সাচে ইয়াং সো ডক্টর শামিম ইয়াঙ্গার ব্রাদার অফ আওয়ার রেসপেক্টেড প্রফেসর সালাউদ্দিন শাহ স্যার মাদার অ্যান্ড টু ব্রাদার্স অফ প্রফেসর সালমা আকরোজ ম্যাডাম আনসার Please name the speaker's name and your name before asking the question. Due to the time constraint, we will allow just a few questions, four to five. And if you have any personal interest or further question, you can ask to the panelists or the speakers in the tea break time. Thank you. Any question from the audience? কারণ ব্যাপারটা <laughs> 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 হেপাটাইটিস <laughs> but the life is critical and the patient may die without transplant so in this case considering the risk of reactivation of viral infections who can take those donors thank you yes the good the great to give you what 
becomes one of the risk factors for the management of the uh, No, sir. In these cases, there was not such a uh, uh, condition because all of them were uh, young, uh, of young ages, and uh, the body structure was uh, normal. Um, but uh, in case of female, we uh, show the pancreatitis after the inspiration is given. And uh, the young patient who was uh, 19 years old, uh, he has uh, no such comorbidities or any uh, uh, mentionable complication of his own. When uh, treated these patients with uh, L as paragenes, one of the complications you noted that uh, one of the pancreatitis. Another uh, uh, complication that any type of hemorrhagic complications or any thrombotic complications that you think that you, you observed in your patients. Uh, okay, sir. One patient was uh, due to hemorrhagic complication, but who developed pancreatitis. Uh, he was uh, she was a female. And uh, uh, after the pancreatitis, we were compelled to uh, discontinue the uh, discontinue the protocol, and we started palliative. And uh, but the palliation uh, did not respond as well. Can I request everybody? Can I ask a question? Please. I want to take the opportunity you in the dais. So first question to you. And it was a fantastic presentation. You mentioned that MRD level is 0.005%. That is too low. What is the tools that can be identified as such a low level of MRD positivity? Thank you, ma'am, for your question. Uh, as I have taken the information from International Journal, most of them use uh, uh, to detect MRD, they use NGS. Uh, so uh, the current value is so low. NGS is not available in every country, even in uh, most referral centers, they use the NGS now. So we can uh, mention the MRT level 10 to the power minus 4, that is the um, uh, standard for us to detect. Uh, thank you so much for your answer. May I ask another question to Dr. Mahu? Thank you. Um, he has also, all the four speakers very deliberately, very nicely, and uh, literally they are very nicely delivered their uh, presentation, but Dr. Mahabub, I want to know that you mentioned the myeloability, chemotherapy or conditioning therapy, like TBI and blue sulfur and blue and sci. But there is excellent another myeloability conditioning chemotherapy that is known as reduced, not reduced intensity, rather it is called reduced toxicity myeloability conditioning chemotherapy, that is RTM. That is the blue and flu. That is a very good option and comparable to TBI uh, continuing uh, conditioning chemotherapy and also the uh, B1 side conditioning chemotherapy. So it, it is, uh, I just want to mention you, uh, do you have uh, any comment on uh, busulfan and fluorabin? Thank you. Thank you, Madam. Uh, the alternative options are many. There are uh, total body irradiation is basically based for ALN, but some other regimens such as busulfan based, that is busulfan may be combined to cyclosomite, Busulfan may be combined to fluorocarbon also, and uh, cyclosan may be replaced by uh, eutroposite also. So there are many other type of conditioning using this in many setups. I want to add you that there is not a lot of chemotherapy for conditioning chemotherapy, only four or five drugs along with the uh, TBI is the only myelinating. So if we want to give the myeloablate the patient, the TBI is most, mostly effective for lymphoblastic or lymphoid malignancies, but it has certain risk of uh, tissue toxicity in terms of GBHD. So that, that uh, hampers the outcome in terms of oral survival and disease-free survival also. So we can think of uh, blue, blue and flu because uh, this is comparable nowadays. It is considering as a comparable outcome. Uh, thank you. I, I think uh, the panelists also will add on this. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. That was a wonderful question and session. And our panel of experts will further discuss about the uh, speakers today and about the topic today. 
I will request our first panelist, Professor Dr. Akhil Ranjan Vishnash, who has passed his MBBS from Rangpur Medical College. चिंता कर ठीक ना थे ट्रिटमेंट प्रोटोकल ट्रिटमेंट चयेस काउन्सिलिंग समस्या हो जाए प्रथम स्पीकार के जिज्ञासा करते चाहिए अपना स्लैड शो देखे डब्ल्यू बी सी कम पंचाश हजार बेसि गल एल 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 एवं टी सेल एल एल क्षेत्र आलदा डिमार्केशन आना जोटुकू जान
we rule out the infectious complications and we did the bone marrow. Yes, we found that it is packed bone marrow with the lymphoblast and the flow confirmed that it is DLL. So, sir, uh, in this case, uh, I mean, the count option is not there, but uh, we will consider the other uh, risk stratifications like age. Uh, this is for the juniors. Like, uh, you know, there are five to seven criteria uh, uh, from each group. Uh, it differs uh, as uh, uh, our uh, sir said that uh, uh, age is there, not there, but then we will uh, consider uh, around uh, about the genetic uh, stratification, the age stratification, the molecular abnormalities, uh, TNP, uh, if it is ETP, for example, if there is uh, other, say, like uh, IPJJ and other things, then other criteria will form. And another thing is the biology of the disease. This is also sometimes we overlook. Maybe initially the criteria is not that high. Nowadays, uh, we'll, we'll talk say, like uh, whenever it, it comes to MRD, all patients, even in the standard risk, they might not uh, achieve, they might not achieve the MRD negativity. If MRD negativity after induction is positive, I mean, uh, negativity is not there, is not achieved, then by default it goes to high risk as well. So there are other criteria uh, as, well, as well. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Uh, we have very short time. We can uh, discuss it in your time in a panel of experts. Just give us five minutes. I will speak to you. Just, uh, I want to hear from Professor Dr. Akhil Ranjit Vishas as an expert panelist. He is an IHTC fellow, CMC fellow, and now the professor and head of the Department of Hematology and PMT Union, Dhaka Medical College. He is always enthusiastic to evaluate the critical cases of hematology, especially in anemia, bleeding disorder, multiple myeloma, acute leukemia, and now on bone marrow transplantation. He is also the pioneer of modern coagulation lab in Dhaka Medical College Hospital. Professor Dr. Akhil Rajan Vishas, please, sir. Thank you, Julia, for your kind words. Uh, uh, first, uh, I must uh, admit that uh, I am not a an expert at all in the field of hematology, and I'm a humble learner. And from today's program, a great achievement for me is that I realized I, I need to study much more and uh, give much more time in studying hematology. I just emphasize one thing first: that even hydrogen steel uh, can be rusted without use. Every day we uh, go come across lots of information in the field of hematology and other science, and we can't apply properly in our place. So we forget the value. And from Dr. Kamal's presentation, we found that actually first chance is the best chance for the treatment of ALL and all other hematological diseases. Most of the first chance is the best chance. So we have to make it best uh, for first induction. And here we come through the information that in most cases, the treatment related mortality in our country is very high because the condition where we are treating the patient. We are lacking of the best supportive care, best hospital facility, and best nursing care, and best lab facility who is needed for treating heart disease patients, including acronym for this So we have to decide from here that we should not offer intensive chemotherapy treatment for the area or even in common ward and crowded place where we may kill the patient rather than curing the leukemia. We have to make it documented how many people are going to be cured with the intensive chemotherapy in a crowded ward against the chance of mortality due to neutropenic sepsis or bleeding or uh, some other complication, uh, organ, multi-organ failure, uh, uh, disability intravascular coagulation, uh, cerebral uh, complication, thrombosis, etc., etc. This is high tech because we are really giving the induction chemotherapy or any type of intensive chemotherapy we are getting from the books and from the reference, but we are, we are not being able to offer the facility, hospital facility, nursing facility, and the facility. 
then I uh, want to uh, emphasize one thing from the Nishat's presentation. Uh, Nishat's uh, in some place told that uh, with hypersiva disease free survival was 39%, but overall survival is 38%. I think it was a different time point because, because in disease free survival cannot be uh, longer than overall survival. I think it was a different time period. Like disease free survival was probably three years and overall survival was probably four years. And thank you so much for patient sharing and I request uh, my seniors here for commenting the, the next time. Thank you so much. Thank you, sir. Our next panel expert to speak is Dr. Abu Jafar Mohammad Salim. He has joined in Apollo Hospital, Dhaka, as a senior consultant and coordinator of hematology and stem cell transplant department since November 2014. He has more than nine years of working experience in King Faisal Specialist Hospital and Research Center, the pioneer of first ever bone marrow transplantation in private sector of Bangladesh. He is currently working in various fields of hematology, especially leukemia, lymphoma, multiple myeloma, and bone marrow transplantation. Dr. Abu Jafar Mohammad Thank you very much. The time is short, so the, my points will be very precise. And I feel uh, very happy uh, to be here and uh, highly honored and privileged. Uh, after this today's discussion, uh, one thing is uh, in my mind that, uh, you know, first thing we have to establish a national guideline for the ALL. We have been discussing few days, and I think we can start from the ALL because we discussed today, we heard that four steps in ALL management. So what is the benefit of establishing a guideline? I know we will not be biased. I know uh, we will talk in the same tone. So the patients will not be biased because the, when a patient is diagnosed as a leukemia, they go to different consultants and they get different information. They lose their confidence, they go abroad. But whenever we talk in the same language, then the patient's confidence will be there so the patient will stay. The second uh, importance of making a guideline is, you know, sometimes we think that it's, uh, we criticize each other because I might like BFM, my sir can like, others can like hyper -C -Bet. So we can, uh, whenever we differ, a patient thinks that, that we are criticizing each other. So that will be stopped. So this is very important. <coughs> and then, we know what are the supports uh, to be needed. We know that our infrastructure it is developing. And uh, ALL, you know, I wondered that uh, the one important issue is blood banking support, the cryo precipitate. All ALL protocols, they need uh, ls -perogenase. And ls -perogenase, it causes a lot of consumes, a lot of cryo precipitate. And I don't know how many hospitals are ready to support with this cryoprecipitate because in my personal experience, uh, we are using, in our department, we are using more than 800 units of cryo per year. So it's a huge amount. And uh, all the speakers, they showed their courage just passed and the way they presented is brilliant. And uh, all the participants, they were focusing on the discussion. And we discussed from the basic to the top, uh, the society has to take initiative to bring in some of the medications. Like uh, we are uh, talking about transplant, most of the transplant medications are not available. It is very difficult to bring in our country in an authentic way. Uh, we know about Nilarabin. I just completed one patient, Nilarabin. This is the 52 years old doctor and he uh, failed hyper -seven and other protocols, but he responded very well in the first uh, cycle of Nilarabin, and it was brought from UK. Anyway, so with this uh, issue, I will uh, hand over uh, my microphone to my uh, seniors, and uh, nothing special because of shortest time. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Every point of your speech is special, really. And now our next expert is Professor Pardon Mosdaludin. So I graduated from Chittagong Medical College Hospital Medical College, and after joining in Bangladesh Army, he has done MCPS, DCP, and FCPS in hematology. He is a clinical fellow from NUS Singapore at Tata Memorial Center at Calcutta, and a BMT expert. Currently, he is working, uh, and also he is one of the pioneer of starting the BMT in both autologous and allogenic in combined military hospital Dhaka. 
He is the head of the BFT unit in Commonwealth Hospital, Dhaka. So, Professor Conor Mosul. Thank you very much for inviting me as the respect. Yeah, the first speaker gives stratification of area. Yeah. Uh, I think Professor Jolly says no pressure. High count in the typical is high risk. But what is it's about the low count and narrow pack with the first uniform? Of course, in addition to the count, there's another and the electricity, which then vital role in the as discussed by the speaker, may be such that it's human trapping by the mature behaviors, bad prognosis, cytogenetics, transpiration, poor level, and activity to hybrid bank. These all factors play a vital role in the stratification and could manage the iron pressure depending that category and categorized by this stratification. And in third speaker, the special speaker talked about the management of relapsed air. Actually, it is the nightmare for the hematologist in case of relapsed air. There is no standard chemical management for relapsed disease, although a few agents are approved for using this. Mainly, immunotherapy here plays a vital and tremendous role in treating this relapsed and refractory air. Linear to move up, that is. Which is directed against both target organ against target antibody CD19 and CD3 tissues. And melanopin is very much effective in case of relapsed TL. You know, like this one, build is also approved for relapsed disease. Some surface chemo like <clears throat> is very much effective in clarifying either like fly idea, black idea, black or tofalorin-based surface regimen can be used. Antibody, mainly antibody therapy is very much essential and <clears throat> plays an important role in treating the relapse in refractory error, such, such as ofatumumab, which is an anti-CD2 antibody that binds different effect of that redox group, and alemtuzumab, and other is ozonomycin. Ozonomycin, Acts on CD20 component And finally, a chimeric antigen security cell therapy is very much effective in treating the relapse well. The fourth speaker told about the allergenic transplantation error questions. According to the question of uh, Dr. Mafuha, my laboratory is mainly young, young adult patients in relapse failure. We, can, we use it when it is of preferred product, side TBI or GUSI. But in comorbid condition and a big aging patient, POBU can be used as a medical agent. Thank you very much for giving me the opportunity to talk this forum. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Our next panel of experts is Professor Dr. Mahbubur Rahman. Sir graduated from Dhaka Medical College, passed his FCBS within a short time, and he has served as a clinician and mentor in Chittagong Medical College and Hospital for several years. He has a FACP and FRCP. He has established the hematology department in National Institute of Cancer Research and Hospital, and currently working as the professor and head of the same department. He has a vast knowledge and experience of working with various cases of lymphoma, myeloma, and acute leukemia. He is always working for the betterment of the society, and he is still the current president of Society of Hematology, Bangladesh, and also the ex-chairman, faculty of hematology, PCPS. Professor Dr. Mahmoud Rahman. Thank you, Dr. Zulfia. Actually, Zulfia, I have a আমি <laughs> <laughs> I love to be 
of the Society of Accountants to develop a guideline, national guideline. And we will try to follow the national, national guideline as fast as possible. But I am attached to the treatment of hematological disorders in Bangladesh. Uh, with Professor Rashid, our mentor, like Professor Rashid, I joined the Hematology Department as the external instead. The first cases of hematological malignancy used to be dealt with us, Professor Rashid, myself, and uh, later on, our Brigadier Jahid Mahmoud, he also came to the course. So, what difficulty we faced, we remember that our patient is to be admitted in general ward. Beside our patient, a patient of gastroenterology, a patient of nephrology, a patient of hepatology, with so many infections. Our patient is to be there, and initially, we used to lose our patient. And the mortality was so high. One day I said to the patient, Sir, why do you treat the patients? They don't go home and take something like that. Because the mortality is so high because of this environment. And the scarcity of drugs and also the fun of the patient. We could not use GCC for every patient. We could not use antifungal and higher antibiotics for the patient. So most of our patients used to die. Now, the treatment protocol, here in the treatment protocol, uh, actually this is to be decided initially after this stratification. Professor Mahmoud said very well that we should know the minimum risk factors that the patient, whether it is T cell, real or or T cell. Number two, whether he or she is blood if you're positive or negative. The other criteria that we can see is the total count. And the patients who are solvent, we can advise them for further investigation like cytogenetics. And then we'll have to decide which protocol we choose. Is it BFM? Is it defective? Is it LGB? Is it uh, HEMA? Or is it adversary? So, and uh, if it is in institutional practice, I think there should be a board. The patient, with all the investigation, to be placed to the board, and the board will decide which protocol to be chosen for the patient. And accordingly, we will treat the patient. And we will also assess the financial ability of the patient. If the patient is not financially solvent, we should not go for any particular protocol which is expensive, which needs support. And if the patient cannot keep the support, then what will happen? He will die. The same thing is happening. At some time or other, the patient says, No, I have no, no, no more capability. To contribute for the antibiotics, for the arthritis, uh, GCSF, and other drugs. So at, at that point, there is no other way other than killing the patient. So <clears throat> I think first our assessment is risk stratification is very nicely. Uh, the first speaker, Dr. Anupipa, is stated. So minimum assessment tools, that means minimum investigation we should do and we should stratify the patient and we should sit together if it is institution that what protocol we will give and we should follow that after assessing the financial ability of the patient. Another very important issue is that our patients cannot be kept in isolation. Now, I have a patient in my clinic with multiple myeloma. She is a female. Uh, 
daughter is doctor, son in law is doctor, and some other relatives. There are four or five doctors in the education. And there are four or five attendants inside the cabinet. And I requested so much. So, we are doctor, we know what. So, uh, the patient cannot be the talent. You see this soon. So, this is the scenario that maintenance of isolation is very difficult in our country. And she cannot maintain the isolation. The infection, contamination, just infection. And other thing is that if the patient is assessed and is found to be highly special. I think we should not go for higher protocol. We cannot kill the patient. So the option should be either we will continue the full treatment, the full protocol, and if needed, we will go for, go for the normal transplant. So if the patient cannot, I think he should be given ability. So I think this this uh, stratification and making a guideline for the country and also the making awareness of the patient and their attendance for good outcome in, in the time evenly issue. So I think everybody should think about the guideline and about the treatment protocol the what to be and what not to be. And making the patients and their attendance have up for the treatment of procedure. And finally, I hope this Hematology Society uh, will take up this responsibility to make a guideline, a still guideline, and uh, will follow, if we will follow, try to follow. And another final uh, request is that the government has taken initiative to issue help. Insurance and our the most weak, weakest point I think I mean to say is that we we are not under the coverage of insurance, so we cannot spend any money for any patient. So these patients should be under medical insurance. The insurance company will pay any amount that is in your pocket. If this situation comes to Bangladesh, I think that it will start easy. Thank you, sir. We have an expert opinion, and society will ensure your opinions. Thank you again. And before our concluding remarks from Professor John Roman, sir, I would like to add uh, to you, to the audience, that there is a last topic on a novel oral iron chelator therapy, which is, will be delivered by Dr. Just have patience for 10 to 15 minutes. After that, we will go to a tea break. So now I would like to hear the concluding remarks from our today's chairperson, Professor Mohammed Jalil Brahma. <laughs> শুধু একটা কারণে যে যখন এই হিমাটোলজি জার্নালটা শুরু হয় তখন দুই তিনজন লোক দিয়ে শুরু হয়েছে কিন্তু আজকে আমি যেটা দেখতে পাচ্ছি যে আমাদের এই হিমাটোলজিতে প্রচুর লোক তৈরি হয়েছে এবং এটা দিন দিন বাড়তে থাকবে এবং চলতে থাকবে তবে এক্সপার্ট প্যানেল যারা ডিসকাশন করলো এর সঙ্গে আমি একটু যারা প্রেজেন্টেশন আজকে করেছে প্রেজেন্ট করে যে ডেলিভারি দিল প্রেজেন্টেশন এ সো ভেরি নাইস দ্যাট ইজ মোস্ট রিসেন্ট অ্যাডভান্স ডেভেলপমেন্ট অফ দিস হিমাটোলজি রিগার্ডিং দা ডায়াগনোসিস ট্রিটমেন্ট এন্ড ফলো আপ আফটার ট্রিটমেন্ট অফ দিস পেশেন্টস দি কমন্ট অফ দিস ইজ নট পসিবল অল ওভার দা কান্ট্রি but it is a definitely centers due to interest all criteria for the transplant because there are poor the poor people in our country most of the poor people so they will go to the dental way and they can get to the actual intensivist doctor the professor will be successful for the normal or 
তাকে সুখ দেওয়া না শান্তি দেওয়া কিছুদিন বার বেঁচে রাখা কিন্তু কি ওষুধ যে তুইতে মারার কোন যুক্তি নাই ডাক্তার যেসব কাজেই এই জিনিসগুলাকে আমাদের সঙ্গে রাখতে হবে যেটা বলেছে সেটাই আর এর সঙ্গে শুধু শুধু আমি একটা জিনিস আরো বলতে চাই যে আমাদের এই সোসাইটি যখন থেকে মানে কাজ করে আসছে বা যখন থেকে এই সংগঠন তৈরি হয়েছে তখন থেকে আজ পর্যন্ত একটা জিনিসকে খুব প্রাধান্য দেওয়া হয়েছিল এবং বলা হচ্ছিল প্রতি মিটিংয়ে প্রতি ইয়েতে কিন্তু সেখানে দেখা গেছে কি যে ন্যাশনাল গাইডলাইনস একটা ন্যাশনাল গাইডলাইনস থাকবে ট্রিটমেন্টের উপরে এবং সেখানে সব কিছু থাকবে কমপ্লিকেশন ম্যানেজমেন্ট থেকে শুরু করে সব কিছু থাকবে এটা যদি একটা কোভিড রিকভারি করে দেওয়া হয়েছে কিন্তু সেটা কতটুকু কাজ হয়েছে আমি আর পরে জানি না তবে আমার মনে হয় ইন ফিউচার যারা আপনার প্রচুর ইমার্জেন্সি তৈরি হয়ে গেছে এখন সেই হিসাবে যারা পেরিফেরিতে আছে বা যারা অন্যান্য ইনস্টিটিউশন আছে তাদের জন্য কিন্তু এই জন্য একটা জিনিস আমাদেরকে আমরা যারা আছে এখন ভালো তারাকে তৈরি করে দেওয়া উচিত এবং তাতে হবে কি পিপল উইল বি বেনিফিটেড অ্যান্ড ডক্টর অলসো উইল বি বেনিফিটেড ফ্রম দিস আর এর সঙ্গে সঙ্গে যেটা সবচেয়ে বেশি দরকার যেটা আমাদের মনে হয় আমাদের দেশে যে এখন যারা নতুন হিমাটোলজিস্ট হচ্ছেন এবং বিভিন্ন জায়গায় যাচ্ছেন তারা যেন চেষ্টা করে সেই সব জায়গায় তাদেরকে ডিপার্টমেন্ট কেন্দ্রে তৈরি করার জন্য এবং ডিপার্টমেন্ট তৈরি করবে তাহলে হবে কি লোক আস্তে আস্তে বাকি থাকবে মানুষের চিকিৎসা পাবে এটা হলো সবচেয়ে বেশি প্রয়োজন আর আজকের যে প্রোগ্রামটা এটা সম্পর্কে আমি বলতে চাই যে আমি এই কামিন সোসাইটির কাছে রিকোয়েস্ট রাখব যে এই প্রোগ্রামগুলো যেন এখন সব জায়গায় হয় নট ইন দা ঢাকা ইন্টারকন্টিনেন্টাল নট দা ঢাকা মেডিকেল কলেজ নট ইন দা আইজিএমএস এর ডিফারেন্স অঙ্গ মেডিকেল কলেজ বিভিন্ন জায়গায় এটা হতে হবে এবং সেটা চেষ্টা করতে হবে আমাদেরকে তার কারণ হলো আমাদের উদ্দেশ্য এটা লিমিট নাই কারণ যে শুরু থেকে শেষ পর্যন্ত জ্ঞান আরোপ করা এবং জ্ঞান বিতরণ করা এবং এটার জন্য এই সেমিনারগুলো আজকে যেটা হলো তার অত্যন্ত খুশি হয়েছে যে এই রকম সেমিনার যেন আমি যারা সোসাইটি আছে তার এডিসিয়েশন নিয়ে বিভিন্ন জায়গায় প্রোগ্রাম করে ঢাকা হোক বা ঢাকার বাইরে হোক আর আমি মনে করি আসলে সামনের দিকে আগায় নিয়ে যেতে পারি এই বলে আমি বক্তব্য শেষ করছি এরপরে যদি ফটো স্পিকার থাকে বলতে পারেনি থ্যাংক ইউ ভেরি মাচ Thank you, sir, for your valuable speech. With this, we have come to the end of this session, and I would like to add a few lines for the new hematologist. Tomar Prozapotir Pakha, Amar Akash Chawa Mukhtho Jukhet, Rogin Shabok Pakha. Never stop learning and dreaming. We have lost so many lives, so many young lives, so many valuable lives within the last year, and it was such a depressing year. but we must not stop here learning is a continuous process and with the changing medical science we should always try to improve ourselves and help each other to survive in this competitive world and still the audience if you have any question you can ask freely to our speakers in our tea time they are available throughout the program and the last topic would be by Dr. Horimu Kalukdar, a novel oral iron curator, he did his talking. So please come to the stage. Uh, dear respected audience, good morning and it's a privilege and a great honor for me to present in front of our audience in the inaugural ceremony of the Executive Committee of the Entrepreneurial Society of Bangladesh and the Scientific Seminar. Uh, this is Dr. Parimo Tanjar, uh, Vice President of Research and Development in the Pharmacy Media Seminar. I will give you the brief presentation of the deferrals, a novel oral alarm later. Today, 
I want to discuss some topics on the different heroes. Uh, what is iron ore about the calculation, calculating is the quality aspects of our brand different heroes, and some experimental evidences and the conclusion why the different heroes is the Nobel iron ore, Nobel one. Dear audience, uh, different heroes is the Nobel uh, iron ore calculator is the uh, uh, we mainly used to reduce the chronic iron ore volume in patients who are receiving long term blood transfusions, and uh, here is the you can see the uh, and molecular structure of the different cells, and if uh, I go to the in brief the pharmacodynamics uh, is the one of the calculator that is selective against the iron, especially iron three. It is a titrated ligand that binds with a high affinity in the two to one ratio. And in brief the mechanism of action, two molecules of different acid uh, as capable to bind the one molecule of atom. I don't know this is free. Uh, dear audience, why uh, now we need to know the why the iron overloading? All of know that uh, blood transfusion is one of the major cause of the iron overload and is overloading in the endocrine glands, liver, and heart, and causing severe disease. So that's why the regulation the therapy is needed. And what is the regulation therapy? Regulation therapy is like, uh, we need to use a chelate of the ligand and that binds with the toxic metal. And for a, a complex iron metal that is not toxic and it, it is the fit from the body. And if uh, the particular topic of the different acidox, in the different acidox, uh, uh, in the left hand side, for bottom left hand side, there are two molecules of different acidox bind one molecule of iron in the form of iron C plus. And there are some uh, iron chelating agents that are uh, different examine, different acidox, and the fibrinol. And diferox, uh, diferox is a uh, why it's novel because it's a uh, 8 to 16 hours of apply and it's a oral, uh, it's a very easy to uh, administer and uh, the dose is there once daily. Moreover, diferox is itself is sufficient as a monotherapy in the majority of the patients. Uh, uh, now I would like to take you the overview of the uh, our brand diferox and the quality aspects of the diferox. Why diferox? Diferox is the our uh, generic brand. We are following the uh, stringent guideline, and the, the molecule is developed by the quality by design. And before going for the commercial production, we have uh, performed the stability study as per ICS guideline. And this is one of the example of the data of the one facility batch. But we have uh, the data for the three development batches, and these are the summary of the. Uh, uh, three stability batches. Uh, you, you can see that as per ICS guidelines, we need to perform the stability study, the stress condition, as well as the as per zone four condition, and all the uh, parameters in the well within the limit, and also the dissolution is, is one of the most critical parameters that is also well within the limit. And we are abide by the WHO guideline. And for the WHO guideline, we need to perform uh, several activities to give a give an efficient uh, a drug product to the patient. And the, uh, the first is the premises that uh, manufacturing processes should be uh, designed in such a way that it's uh, cost contamination free. And all the ensure the all the active ingredient is appropriate uh, and the physical state of property. Ensure that the mixing of the excipients in a homogeneous situation, homogeneity. Ensure the tablet poses the mechanical strength. Uh, if we don't have the uh, mechanical strength enough to hold the tablet property, so uh, patient cannot take it. And uh, uh, another two main uh, part is the uh, minimize, minimize the uh, degradation of the active ingredient and the minimize the risk of microbial contamination. And because we are producing a uh, high quality product and the quality is ensured by the very sophisticated instrument, not only the quality control but also in the production, we are also using the modern high tech technology, modern high technology that ensures that the product is sufficiently good enough uh, to be consumed by the patient. And uh, uh, also the process to be robust. Here I have seen the experimental evidences that during the manufacturing process we have to take a lot of samples to ensure the homogeneity. So in, in all the cases, we have found that the results are oil within the limit. And uh, finally, the assay, that means the active content, is the, you, you can see uh, the three part initial, middle, and end, all the, all, in all the cases, is around 100%. Uh, 100%. 
and one of the major aspect of the dispersible tablet that it should be dispersed within three minutes but in our cases is less than 30 seconds within 30 seconds our tablet is dispersed so that the patient can easily take the um, uh, medicine also why uh, why different options is the choice you can see uh, i have already discussed that we need to check on the some critical parameter along with other parameters such as impurity and uh, particle size is the API. Each and every lot of API has been tested with their equipment and also the uh, the finished products that we are producing uh, in the form of tablet. And the tablet doses formed to the patient. It is also each and every lot has been tested. And the critical uh, parameter hardness, the disintegration time, and the microbial limit and other impurities are well controlled and well within the limit. So uh, if we compare, uh, if we uh, check back with the WHO guidance for the tablet, all the active ingredients, the appropriate particle size and shape, we are maintaining less than 10 micron particle size for the better viability than absorption uh, for the tablet. And uh, mixing with the excipient, the process, the robust process it is also improved. And also the tablet possesses mechanical strength. This is the hardness is around 80 to, 80 to 20 kb and also minimize the degradation of active ingredient. It is also almost 0%. You know, we, it is well controlled and uh, in the, also the minimization of the microbial contamination and the cross-contamination all are ensured uh, during the manufacturing process. So whenever you are getting a product referral, you can be ensured that it is the quality is 100%. And so we are uh, guaranteed that it, uh, whenever you get a referral, it is 100% quality ensured. And this is the high standard quality of deferoxidops in the generic version in the form of deferoxidops we are putting, giving you for the patient. And uh, I want to conclude that whenever you, uh, you prescribe a patient for the deferoxidops, a uh, safety, quality and efficacy, it is ensured from our end and it is your part that uh, the patient will get the maximum benefit for the, from the drug. So the as the product is safety quality ensured, so we can uh, easily prescribe it. And one of the thing I need to discuss that uh, I uh, I came to know that you are talking about many molecules that are not currently available in Bangladesh, but you will be very happy to know that we are working on aspartic mega related aspartic as a CDD very So all the molecules we are working as an R and D, we are. Uh, already in the uh, development stage, so uh, we can ensure that the light difference, the same, uh, the brand molecule will come from the people. So thank you very much for your kind questions and help. Thank you very much.
স্যার একটা গ্রুপ ছবি নিয়ে সবাই ভাইয়া কেকটা সরাই দিন হ্যালো ভাইয়া কেকটা সরাই দিন কেকটা সরাই দিন কেকটা সরাই দিন নাকি <laughs>
দেখবি আমি করলে ম্যাচিং হয়ে যাবে
সম্মানিত অতিথিবৃন্দ আপনারা সবাই রাজার আসনটা একটু গ্রহণ করুন আমাদের কিছুদিনের মধ্যেই আমাদের অভিষেক অনুষ্ঠানটা শুরু হবে তার দয়া করে সবাই নিজের নিজের আসন গ্রহণ করুন সম্মানিত হেমাটোলজিস্ট সম্মানিত অতিথিবৃন্দ আমাদের হেমাটোলজির অভিষেক অনুষ্ঠান কিছুক্ষণের মধ্যেই আরম্ভ হবে আপনারা সবাই দয়া করে সবাই নিজ নিজ আসন গ্রহণ করুন
Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Uh, I'm very happy and my immense pleasure to be here. Thanks for the organizer. Um, today's uh, respected chairperson of the session, our immediate past president, Dr. Professor Dr. Mohammad Mahmoud Raman sir. And, and our general secretary and the newly elected president, Professor Dr. Abdul Aziz, and Professor and general, newly elected general secretary, Professor Shiaz Islam, <coughs> uh, our vice, newly elected two vice president, Colonel and freedom fighter, uh, Sir Abdul Hassan and Professor Dr. al Sir, and our Honorable um, Chief Election Commissioner, uh, Professor Jahid Mahmoud Sir, our Brigadier, Brigadier General Farooq Ahmed Sir, and Professor Sama Madam, and our Respected hematologists, faculties of different institutions of Bangladesh, distinguished guests, and trained and elected media, Assalamu alaikum and very good afternoon. Um, during this pandemic era, era, we lost as many of our beloved ones, our colleagues, our parents, and I must, uh, I must pray for the eternal peace and maghfirat. Thanks. Um, and this is our the glorious month, and we are glorious on the last 50 years of independence and stepping forwards to our selected by wearing a winning crown of democracy to the courageous, optimistic, and prestigious executive committee. And we like to thank to your sustained support. And we want to reform the society by disseminating the glorious, modern, and scientifically approved progress and activities to the hematologists, to the people, to the government, and the nation. Our target to develop a dignified hematology society will deliver the result to the independence to all the doors. This is our promise. Hematology is a sector for active activating and doing is well as many possibilities and opportunities. We have to work together, have to tie in one knot and build our identity on a strong hematology community. Today, we will be coordinated with the newly elected committee in, of Hematology Society of Bangladesh 2021 to 2023. I like to welcome to you to this auspicious meeting, and thank you all. Manovar, Amadir, Aminulatul Kulik Sarte. Akhon, Amadir, Nobogotito Committee, Kodi Chai Porto. A Kodi Chai Porto, Ami, Brigadier General Adho, Jaiman sir, ke onurut kurbo. Amader nabo committee puri chay pabo take to. Bolen. Uh, 
আমার বিশ্বাস আপনাদের সকলের সহযোগিতা নিয়ে তারা সোসাইটির জন্য উত্তরোত্তর উন্নয়নের জন্য কাজ করে যাবে Thank you. 
Dr. Mahabul Alam. Airport Dr. Mahabul Madhimul Islam. Dr. Ariful Rahman. Shakti Abega Pitra. 
ইধরনের একটি অনুষ্ঠান আয়োজন করতে পারা এবং এর ধ্বংস হতে পারা সত্যি অত্যন্ত একটি গর্বের বিষয় আমি নিজেকে আপনাদের সামনে এই বক্তব্য দেওয়ার সুযোগ পাওয়ার জন্য নিজেকে অত্যন্ত গর্বিত মনে করতেছি আপনারা সবাই জানেন যে বিগত দুই বছরে এই কমিটির সভাপতি হিসেবে যে দায়িত্ব পালন করেছি তার আগেও আরও পাঁচ বছর আমি সেক্রেটারি জেনারেল হিসেবেও এই কমিটির দায়িত্ব পালন করেছি সুতরাং এটি একটি দীর্ঘ সময় এই দীর্ঘ সাত বছরে সাত বছর আগে যখন আমাকে এই সোসাইটির জেনারেল হিসেবে কিছু সত্যিকারে নিবেদিত প্রাণ যারা হিমাটোলজিস্ট ভাবেন উন্নয়নের জন্য ভাবেন হিমাটোলজিস্টদেরকে নিয়ে ভাবেন তারা আমাকে অনুরোধ করেছিলেন যে এই সোসাইটিকে একটি সুন্দর মর্যাদাপূর্ণ একটি গর্ব করার মতো এই সোসাইটিকে রূপান্তরিত করার জন্য যেন আমি চেষ্টা চালিয়ে যাই এবং আমাকে অনুরোধ করেছিলেন যেন আমি দায়িত্বটি গ্রহণ করব আমি প্রথমে রাজি ছিলাম না পরে সবার অনুরোধে আমি দুটো উদ্দেশ্য সামনে নিয়ে কাজ করেছি একটি উদ্দেশ্য ছিল যারা সবাই জানে যদিও পুরোনো কথা আমি পুরোনো কথা সাধারণত এগুলো বলা পছন্দ করি তারপরেও বলতে হয় যে আমাদের ভেতরে এক ধরনের একটা বিভাজন তৈরি হয়েছে অথবা আমরা বিভাজিত হয়ে যাচ্ছি না এমন একটা অবস্থা আমার অনুরোধ করা হয় আমি তাদেরকে বলেছিলাম যে আমি যদি দায়িত্ব নেই তাহলে সোসাইটির কোনো লাভ হবে কিনা তারা বলেছিলেন প্রথম যে লক্ষ্য এবং উদ্দেশ্য ছিল সেটা হচ্ছে যে বিভাজন ঠেকানো এবং সোসাইটিকে একটি আম্পায়ার নিচে আনা একটি ইউনাইটেড শক্তিশালী সোসাইটি হিসেবে গড়ে তোলা সেটি ছিল আমার প্রধান উদ্দেশ্য সোসাইটিকে ইউনাইটেড রাখা ইউনিটি ইউনাইটেড স্ট্যান্ড ডিভাইডেড বাই ফ্রম সেই মোটর উপরে আস্থা স্থাপন রেখে আমি কাজ করে গেছি যেন সোসাইটি ইউনাইটেড আপনারাই ভালো বলতে পারবেন কতটুকু সফল হয়েছে দ্বিতীয় আর একটি উদ্দেশ্য ছিল যে এই সোসাইটি যেন একটি সত্য ভিত্তির উপরে দাঁড় করানো যায় এই সোসাইটিকে নিয়ে যেন আমরা গর্ব করতে পারি এই সোসাইটি যেন সত্যিকার অর্থে হিমাটোলজিস্টদেরকে নিয়ে ভাবে তাদের স্বার্থ সংশ্লিষ্ট বিষয়গুলো নিয়ে ভাবে এবং ভবিষ্যতের দিক নির্দেশনা দিতে পারে সেই উদ্দেশ্য নিয়ে আমি কাজ করেছি এবং আজকে সোসাইটি যে অবস্থান এসেছে সে সেটি আমি শুধু উপর থেকে আমার যারা আমার সাথে সহযোগী ছিলেন তারা পরামর্শ দিয়েছেন আমি শুধু ভালো পরামর্শ করতে সম্মতি দিয়েছেন এবং তারাই কাজ করেছেন আমি পিছনের থেকে শুধু তাদের উৎসাহ দিয়েছি এবং সম্মতি দিয়ে গেছি ভালো কাজ আমি খুব বেশি পরিশ্রম করি না যা পরিশ্রম করেছেন আমার সাথে যারা ছিলেন তিনটি কমিটি তিনটি কমিটির যে সদস্য কিন্তু ছিলেন তারা সবাই আমি এই অবস্থাতে একটু স্মরণ করতে চাই পিছনের দিকে আজকে যে হিমাটোলজি সোসাইটি এই সোসাইটি এখানে আসার পিছনে আমার অবদান খুবই সামান্য 
সেই কমিটি যে সকল সম্পাদক বৃন্দ সদস্য বৃন্দ ছিলেন বিশেষ করে অধ্যাপক ডাক্তার এম এ আজিজ ছিলেন সেক্রেটারি জেনারেল আমি সবসময় প্রতিটি কাজে তার সাথে পরামর্শ করেছি প্রত্যেকটি আজিজ আমার সাথে পরামর্শ করেছেন এবং এই যে পরামর্শ করা পরস্পরের ভেতরে যে তথ্যের আদান প্রদান করা যেন কোনো গ্যাপ না রাখে আমি এই ব্যাপারে খুব সচেষ্ট ছিলাম বারবার কারণ গ্যাপ তৈরি হলে বিভিন্ন ধরনের কনফিউশন তৈরি হয় যদি গ্যাপ না থাকে তাহলে কাজ করতে সুবিধা হয় আপনি যাকে নিয়ে কাজ করবেন যার সাথে কাজ করবেন আপনারা সবসময় চেষ্টা করবেন যে তাকে জানান তার সাথে পরামর্শ করা আমি আজিজকেও করবো যেহেতু প্রফেসর আজিজ নেক্সট কমিটির সভাপতি হবেন সভাপতি তিনিও যেন তার যে সেক্রেটারি জেনারেল এবং অন্যান্য সম্পাদক তাদের সাথে জন্য এইভাবে কাজ করেন যে কোনো গ্যাপ না রেখে উনি ওনার মনে কি আছে সেটি যেন তাদের সাথে পরামর্শ করেন এবং সবসময় আরো আর ভালো আলোচনা করেন তাহলে ওনার সোসাইটি কার্যক্রম প্রতিষ্ঠিত হবে এবং কাজগুলো ভালো হবে আমি গত দুই বছরে আমার সাথে যারা যারা কাজ করেছেন বিশেষ করে আজিজের কথা বলেছি ডাক্তার কামরুল হাসান তারপরে ডাক্তার আশরাফুল হক ডাক্তার ওয়াসিম যুগ্ম সম্পাদক ছিলেন ডাক্তার হকের ডক্টর বিশ্বাস আমি সবার কথা তার এই মুহূর্তে নাম বলে যেতে পারি সবাইকে আমি তাদের প্রতি কৃতজ্ঞতা জানাই আমাকে সহযোগিতা করার জন্য এর বাইরে কমিটিতে যারা ছিলেন তার ভিতরে নিবেদিত প্রাণ কিছু যারা কিছুই চায় না প্রচুর কাজ করতে চায় কাজের প্রতি সিনসিয়ার থাকে অত্যন্ত ডেডিকেটেড মন নিয়ে কাজ করেছেন সেই ধরনের দুই একজনের নাম আমার না বললেই নয় যেমন ডক্টর মোহাম্মদ আলী অত্যন্ত পরিশ্রমী অত্যন্ত ডেডিকেটেড অত্যন্ত ডিভোটেড একজন হিমাচলজিস্ট যে সোসাইটির জন্য কাজ করেছেন এবং এই সোসাইটিকে নিয়মিতভাবে নিয়ে আসার জন্য তার অনেক অবদান আছে বিশেষ করে সোসাইটি যখন রেজিস্টার্ড হয় সেই রেজিস্ট্রেশনের ব্যাপারে জার্নাল প্রকাশের ব্যাপারে সে রাত্রির পরিশ্রম করেছে আমি তার তার অবদানকে এখানে স্বীকার করি এবং তার প্রতি আমার কৃতজ্ঞতা এই সাত বছরে কি করেছে না করেছে সেটি মূল্যায়ন আপনারা করবেন আমি শুধু এটুকুই বলতে চাই যে এই সাত বছরে আপনাদের অনেক বিশেষ করে আমি গত কিছুদিন যাব দেখেছি যে আমাদের যে জ্ঞান হিমাটোলজি তাদের অনেক সুন্দর সুন্দর দৃষ্টিভঙ্গিগুলো বক্তব্য জিনিস দেখেছি তাদের চাওয়া পাওয়া সাথে পরিচিত হয়েছি অনেক কিছুই আসলে বাস্তবায়ন করা সম্ভব হয় নাই আমিও করতে পারি নাই আমি সবসময় যে কথা বলি যে একজন মানুষের পক্ষে একটি কমিটির পক্ষে সব কিছু বাস্তবায়ন করা সম্ভব নয় এটি ধাপে ধাপে উন্নতি হয় কিছু বাস্তবায়িত হয় কিছু একজন সামনের কমিটি বাস্তবায়ন করবে তো আগে থেকে যে কথা আগে বললাম বলেছি এখনও বলছি যে সোসাইটির এই পর্যায়ে আসার জন্য প্রতিটি মানুষের অবদান আছে ধাপে ধাপে এই সোসাইটি এই অবস্থানে এসেছে আপনাদের যে যে চাওয়া পাওয়া ভবিষ্যতের জন্য সেই চাওয়া পাওয়াগুলো নিশ্চয়ই সামনের কমিটি এইগুলো পূরণ করার চেষ্টা করবেন এবং আমাদেরও সহযোগিতা থাকবে ইনশাল্লাহ নিশ্চয়ই একসময় আপনারা যা চান যে আপনাদের নতুন পোস্ট ক্রিয়েশন বিভিন্ন জায়গায় পদায়ন ক্রমশ এবং অন্যান্য বিষয়গুলো যেমন আপনার একটি ইনস্টিটিউট চান আপনারা চান যে আধুনিক মানের একটি হিমাটোলজি হিমাটোপ্যাথোলজি ল্যাবরেটরি হবে যেখানে সবাই কাজ করতে পারবে আমাদের দেশে হিমাটোলজিতে আক্রান্ত হিমাটোলজিক্যাল ডিসিজে আক্রান্ত যেসব রুগী আছে তারা বিশ্বমানের চিকিৎসা পাবে এবং সেই চিকিৎসা পাওয়ার জন্য যেসব সুযোগ সুবিধা দরকার সেগুলি আমাদের দেশেই তৈরি হবে আপনাদের এই চাহিদাগুলো নিশ্চয়ই অচিরে এগুলো পূরণ হবে আস্তে আস্তে পূরণ হবে একটি জিনিস আমি একটু ভুলে গেছি এটি মেনশন করা দরকার ছিল আগে যে আজকের যে অভিষেক অনুষ্ঠান দুই হাজার উনিশ একুশ দুই হাজার তেইশ হিমাটোলি সোসাইটি অফ বাংলাদেশের যাদের উপলক্ষ্য করে অনুষ্ঠান এই তাদের নির্বাচনের জন্য 
भविष्य निर्वाचित होते सोसाइटी
বিহু পালনচরণ করে থাকি সেজন্য ক্ষমা চাই কারোর প্রতি যদি অন্যায় আচরণ করে থাকি সেজন্য ক্ষমা চাই কারোর প্রতি যদি অবিচার করে থাকি সেজন্য আপনাদের কাছে ক্ষমা চাই আমার জন্য দোয়া করবেন আমি যেন সুস্থ থাকি আপনাদের সাথেই থাকতে পারি সেই জন্য আমাকে দোয়া করবেন এই বলে আমাদের আপনাদের সবার সুস্বাস্থ্য কামনা করে এবং হিমাটোলজি সোসাইটি সমৃদ্ধ শালী হবে এই ভবিষ্যৎ আশাবাদ ব্যক্ত করে আমার বক্তব্য শেষ করছি সবাইকে ধন্যবাদ ধন্যবাদ স্যারকে স্যার দীর্ঘদিন ধরে আমাদের বিভিন্ন দায়িত্ব পালন করেছেন এবং স্যারের অভিজ্ঞতা বেশি এবং তার স্যার যে দিক নির্দেশনা দিয়ে গেছেন আশা করি আমরা সেভাবে চলতে পারব ইনশাল্লাহ এখন আমি নবনির্বাচিত কমিটির সাধারণ সম্পাদক অধ্যাপক ডাক্তার মোহাম্মদ সিরাজুল ইসলাম স্যারকে অনুরোধ করবো তার বক্তব্যকে অভিষেক অনুষ্ঠানে মাননীয় সভাপতি মাননীয় চিফ ইলেকশন কমিশনার এবং অন্যান্য কমিশনার বৃন্দ আমার প্রাণপ্রিয় শিক্ষক যাদের হাতে আমার হামাটোলজি শিক্ষা যাদের অক্লান্ত পরিশ্রমে আমি হামাটোলজি শিখতে পেরেছি প্রফেসর জলিল রহমান স্যার প্রফেসর এম এম ধনুষ স্যার ওনাদের প্রতি শ্রদ্ধা রেখে এবং অন্যান্য সিনিয়র হামাটোলজিস্ট আর জুনিয়র হামাটোলজিস্ট যাদের প্রত্যক্ষ ভোটে আমরা নির্বাচিত হয়েছি ওটা আমি নির্বাচিত হয়েছি সেটা আমি বোঝাইনি ওটা সোসাইটির মধ্যে অর্পণ করতে পেরেছি সবার প্রতি কৃতজ্ঞতা রেখে আমি আমার বক্তব্য শুরু করছি ঐতিহাসিক মাস মাস আমাদের জাতির ইতিহাসের সব অত্যন্ত গুরুত্বপূর্ণ এই মাস মহান স্বাধীনতা সংগ্রামের লক্ষ্য শহীদের আত্মত্যাগের আত্মত্যাগ শ্রদ্ধার সাথে স্মরণ করে আমি আমার বক্তব্য শুরু করছি বাংলাদেশে হামাটোলজির প্রতিক্রি মরহম অধ্যাপক আব্দুল রশিদ স্যারের নেতৃত্বে উনিশশো নিরানব্বই সালে প্রতিষ্ঠিত হয় হামাটোলজি সোসাইটি অফ বাংলাদেশ এই সোসাইটি বাংলাদেশের সকল হামাটোলজির প্রতিনিধিত্বকারী সংগঠন আপনারা সবাই জানেন আমরা যে সোসাইটি নতুন পদযাত্রা শুরু করতে যাচ্ছি আমি মনে করি প্রবীণের পরামর্শ এবং নবীনের কর্মদক্ষতা এবং কর্মক্ষমতায় একটা সোসাইটিকে এগিয়ে নিয়ে যায় এক সাফল্য এভাবে নির্ধারিত সাফল্য প্রতিষ্ঠিত হয় রাজনৈতিক পরিচয় এক একজন মানুষের এক রকম থাকতেই পারে কিন্তু হ্যামাটোলজি সোসাইটি সব হ্যামাটোলজিস্ট আসুন আমরা হ্যামাটোলজির উন্নয়নের জন্য একসাথে কাজ করি আধুনিক বিশ্বের মতোই বাংলাদেশে হ্যামাটোলজির বিভিন্ন শাখা বিকশিত হওয়ার প্রয়োজনীয়তা দেখা গেছে সম্মানিত সুযোগবৃন্দ আমি শুধু আমার অনুভূতিগুলো আপনাদের সাথে শেয়ার করছি হ্যামাটোপ্যাথোলজি বা ল্যাব হ্যামাটোলজি ক্লিনিক্যাল হ্যামাটোলজি জেনারেল হ্যামাটোলজি হ্যামাটো অনকোলজি লিকেমিয়া লিনফোমা মাল্টিকোমায়োমা ইত্যাদি ইত্যাদি শাখা প্রকাশা প্রশাখায় বাদ হয়ে উন্নয়নের প্রচেষ্টা চালানো আমাদের এখন দরকার হ্যামাটোলজি সুপার স্পেশালিটি সাবজেক্ট অধিকাংশ সরকারি এবং সব বেসরকারি মেডিকেল কলেজে এই বিষয়ের পদ সৃষ্টি হয় না এখনও জানা পড়ছে এই বিষয়ে পদায়নের কোনো ব্যবস্থা নেই আমরা একসাথে কাজ করলে পর্যায়ক্রমে পদ সৃষ্টি করা সম্ভব হতে পারে তাছাড়া হ্যামাটোলজি ইনস্টিটিউট করা আমাদের চিন্তা ভাবনার মধ্যে অনেক বছর ধরে আছে সে কাজে আমরা খুব বেশি আগাতে পারি আমার মনে হয় অন্যান্য সুপার স্পেশালিটির মতো হ্যামাটোলজির পরে পর এখন বৃদ্ধি পেয়েছে চাহিদা বাংলাদেশ বাড়ছে আমাদের এখন যদি সঠিক উন্নয়নের পথে যেতে হয় তাহলে 
একটা ইনস্টিটিউট প্রতিষ্ঠা করা জরুরি বৈদেশিকের গবেষণা পরিচালনা করে এই কাজটুকু একটা সাবজেক্টের উন্নয়নের জন্য কতটা জরুরি আপনারা নিজেরা উন্নত করেন এসব বিষয়ে পরিকল্পনা এবং বাস্তবায়নের জন্য প্রয়োজনীয় পদক্ষেপ নেওয়া জরুরি বলে আমি আমি মনে করি এক্ষেত্রেও সবার অংশগ্রহণ নিশ্চিত হলে সাফল্য আসবে বা আসতে পারে আমাদের চিকিৎসকদের অনেক সীমাবদ্ধতার মধ্যেই কাজ করতে হয় এই প্রসঙ্গে আমি শুধু একটা কথা বলি আমি জীবনে প্রথম প্রভাবিত হই একটা গোলাপি রঙের কাগজের রিপোর্ট দেখে যেটা আমার সর্দীয় মরহম শিক্ষক যারা বাংলাদেশের মেডিকেল সায়েন্সের কিংবদন্তি শিক্ষক ছিলেন প্রফেসর এস জেম চৌধুরী প্রফেসর মনির উদ্দিন প্রফেসর কলিউল্লা প্রফেসর এম এ কাজী এক বাক্যে ওই সবুজ সরি গোলাপি কাগজটাকে ওনারা মনে করতেন যে ইহাতে যা লেখা আছে এরাই সত্য ইহাই মেডিকেল সায়েন্স অন্য বিষয়ে ওদেরকে বিতর্ক করতে দেখেছি কিন্তু এই গোলাপি কাগজের কোনো বিতর্ক দেখি না আমি তখন মনে মনে ভাবতাম এত বড় প্রফেসর আছে আর একজন আর একজন অনেক সমালোচনা করে কিন্তু ওই লোকের কোনো সমালোচনা নেই তিনি যা বলে ওনারা তাই করেন তিনি প্রফেসর এম এর রসিদ স্যার আমি প্রভাবিত হয়ে তখন মনে মনে যে হেমাটোলজি এমন একটা সাবজেক্ট যেখানে মর্যাদা পাওয়া যায় কিন্তু আমাদের চিকিৎসকদের অনেক সীমাবদ্ধের মধ্যে কাজ করতে হবে কিন্তু রোগ নির্ণয়ের সীমাবদ্ধতা আমাদের লক্ষ্য নয় রসিদ স্যার যেখানে শুরু করছিলেন যেভাবে কাজ করতেন ওনার ডায়াগনোসিস নিয়ে তো কোনো প্রশ্ন করতেন আজ আমাদের ডায়াগনোসিস আমরা মর্ফোলজিতে যা বলি হয়তো দুনিয়া আগে গেছে শুধু মর্ফোলজি এখন আর নির্ভর করে না ডাইভার্সিটি বাড়ছে ডায়াগনোসিস সেই কারণে ডায়াগনোসিসের জন্য শুধু মর্ফোলজি না অন্যান্য টেকনোলজি যেগুলো আছে আমরা সেগুলি খুবই খুবই আয়ত্ত করতে পারি আমার অভিযোগ অনেক এগিয়েছে রসিদ স্যারের যুগ থেকে এখন বাংলাদেশে ট্রান্সফার হচ্ছে কাজী এটা উন্নয়নের লক্ষ্য নয় কিন্তু সেই উন্নয়ন সুসময় নয় সেই উন্নয়নের মাঝখানে ট্রান্সপ্লান্ট হচ্ছে ঠিক কিন্তু আমাদের কোনো রেফারেন্স ল্যাব নাই মলিকুলার ল্যাব নাই আমরা বিভিন্নভাবে বিভিন্ন জায়গা থেকে সংগ্রহ করে ডায়াগনোসিস করতে হবে তাই রোগ নির্ণয়ের আমাদের যে সীমাবদ্ধতা আছে সেটা অনস্বীকার্য আর অধিকাংশ ক্ষেত্রে এই কারণে রোগীরা মৃত্যুদের সম্মুখীন হয় এক্ষেত্রে আমাদের দক্ষ জনগণ তৈরি করা ছাড়া কোনো বিকল্প আছে বলে আমার জানা নেই সর্বোপরি আস্থার সম্পর্ক আছে বাংলাদেশি রোগী আমাদের হেমন্তলজিস্টের কাছে একজনের কাছে গেলে একরকম বুঝে আরেকজনের কাছে গেলে তার কাছে গেলে তো ভিন্ন রকম বুঝল একসময় সে কনফিউজ হয় বলে আমি ইন্ডিয়া যাবো আমি সিঙ্গাপুর যাবো আমি ব্যাংকক যাবো আর একটা সমস্যা হচ্ছে এক্ষেত্রে আমাদের দক্ষ জনগণের অভাব আছে আমরা স্বীকার করলে আমাদের উন্নতির পথ খুলে যাবে আর যদি আমি দেখে রাখি তাহলে উন্নতি বাধাগ্রস্ত হবে তাই এক্ষেত্রে আমাদের দক্ষ জনগণ তৈরি করা ছাড়া কোনো বিকল্প নেই সর্বোপরি আস্থার সংকট আছে আমি বলেছি শুধুমাত্র দক্ষতার সাথে সেবা প্রদান করেই এই সংকট আমরা কাটিয়ে উঠা সম্ভব বলে আমার বিশ্বাস সোসাইটির সাফল্য কিন্তু তার কি যথেষ্ট তারপরও বলছি যাদের হাত ধরে এতটুকু এসেছে তাদের সবার প্রতি কৃতজ্ঞতা আমরা কাজ করবো একসাথে আমি মনে করি নির্বাচিত হওয়া মানে ক্ষমতা নয় দায়িত্ব পাবে সোসাইটির সদস্যবৃন্দ 
আপনাদের শত ব্যস্ততার মধ্যে আমাদের এই অনুষ্ঠানে যোগ দেওয়ার জন্য সময় করে সারা দেশ থেকে ছুটে এসেছেন সেজন্য আমরা কি করব বিশেষ ভাবে ধন্যবাদ জানাই বিকন শর্মা ও হোটেল ইন্টার কন্টিনেন্টাল কর্মচারী কর্মকর্তা বিন্দু যারা সহযোগিত হয়ে আমাদের পাশে থাকেন ধন্যবাদ জানাই বৈজ্ঞানিক অধিবেশনে যারা অংশ গ্রহণ করেছেন আর যে কমিটির অভিষেক হল শুরু হলো তার বছর আপনাদের সহযোগিতা সমর্থন পরামর্শ এই কমিটিকে সঠিক পথে পরিচালিত করবে সাফল্য যদি আসে সেটা আপনার সম্মানিত সদস্য বৃন্দ আপনাদের পরামর্শ সহযোগিতা এবং সক্রিয় অংশগ্রহণ সোসাইটিকে সাফল্য মন্ডিত করবে এই আশা ব্যক্ত করে আমি আমার বক্তব্য শেষ করছি ধন্যবাদ সবাই ধন্যবাদ নবগঠিত কমিটির সাধারণ সম্পাদক স্যারকে এখন আমি বক্তব্য দেওয়ার জন্য নবগঠিত কমিটির সহসভাপতি অধ্যাপক আমঙ্গি কবির সাথে অনুরোধ করছি
আমাদের ক্যান্সার চিকিৎসা করার জন্য টাকা প্রয়োজন হয় আমার কথা হলো প্রয়োজন বলছি এই জন্য আমাদের এই মাস পর্যন্ত থেকে স্টক বিশ্ব দাবি আপনারা যে যে পজিশনে আছেন সেই পজিশন থেকে আপনারা স্টক বিশ্ব দাবি আপনারা জানেন না মেডিকেল কলেজ কিন্তু এখন মানুষ থেকে পড়তে নাই আমি সরকারি চাকরি ত্যাগ করার পরে মেডিকেল কলেজে প্রাইভেট মেডিকেল কলেজে আমি প্রফেসর হিসেবে জয়েন করেছিলাম কিন্তু কিছুদিন পরে যখন দেখা গেল যে আমাকে এক্সাম দেওয়া করা হয় না তখন আমি স্বেচ্ছায় চাকরি ছেড়ে চলে আসছি আমি একা আমি বিএমবিসি থেকে গিয়েছি দরখাস্তি যে হিমাটোলজিতে গিয়ে এক্সাম দেওয়া করা হবে আমি একা গিয়েছি এমন গিয়েছি তারপরে প্রফেসর জলিল স্যার থেকে তিনজন ছিলেন সহকারী সভাপতি ছিলেন সম্মত স্যার থেকে আমি ডিভিশনে আমি ঢাকা ইউনিভার্সিটিতে গিয়েছি বিভিন্ন কাছে গিয়েছি আমি কিন্তু আমার কথা কেউ শোনেনি আমার কথা কেউ শোনেনি কিন্তু আমি এখন বলবো আপনারা সবাই একত্রিত হন প্রতিটা মেডিকেল কলেজে ইমারজেন্সি ডিপার্টমেন্টে তোলার চেষ্টা করুন আপনারা ক্ষমা প্রয়োজন করুন আদারওয়াইজ আপনি তো অস্তিত্ব থাকবে না বিশেষ করে নিশ্চিত আগে আপনাদের বেসিক পয়েন্টে আপনাদের রাইট অফ সার্ভিস করেন বেসিক পয়েন্টে আপনারা যখন চেষ্টা করতে পারলে আপনাদের কিছু হবে না প্রথম চেনো শুধু বিএসএ মধ্যে কোয়ালিটি ডিপার্টমেন্ট যেটা পড়ানো ছিল অনলি ইমারজেন্সি ডিপার্টমেন্ট ডিপার্টমেন্ট অফ ইন্টারনেশনাল ইন আইপিজিএমআর 2023 সালে ঢাকা সিবি চাকি আমরা ইমারজেন্সি ডিপার্টমেন্ট শুরু করি সেকেন্ড चेस्टा कर शेष বর্তমান কমিটির সভাপতি অধ্যাপক মোহাম্মদ আব্দুল আজিজ স্যারকে অনুষ্ঠানের বক্তব্য দেওয়া এবং অনুষ্ঠান সমাপ্তি ঘোষণা করছে অনুরোধ করে সাকিব থেকে বক্তব্য দেওয়ার জন্য অনুরোধ করছি সরি
प्रथम धन्यवाद दी चाहिए आज के उपस्थित सकल प्रिय निर्माण जरा शत व्यस्तार माध्यम अनुष्ठान जोदान चले कृतज्ञ सकले ही एक जिन ना बोल ही ना आप सकले जान वैज्ञानिकबंध
যতো ফ্রেন্ড বিখ্যাত সাম যতো মুদি কৃষ্ণ এই মুহূর্তে সারা বিশ্বের মধ্যে আমার অনুযায়ী সব থেকে বেশি হয় আমার যাহা মতে সেখানে বিয়ে না করতে থেকে আমি যদি ডায়াগনস্টিক সাইডে যেতে চাই সেখানে দেখা যাবে ইমুনো ফেরাটা এক্সট্রাক্ট করে নেবে নেক্সট ব্যাক টু ডেনালিজেন সিকোয়েন্স এরা তো আর আবার যদি আমি যদি মনে করি যে হাউ উইল ম্যানেজ দ্য পেশেন্ট সেটাও দেখা যাচ্ছে যে নিত্য নতুন ট্র্যাক আসছে
Thank you.